Hey guys, I don't know about you, but I'm super excited for the release of Borderlands 2. I've pre-ordered it, my friends have pre-ordered it, and if you have not pre-ordered it, you are crazy because you will not be able to get it in weeks from when it is released because, well, who doesn't love Borderlands, right? Um, so in this mini-series, I'm going to be going over all the skill trees of all the main characters in Borderlands 2, starting with Axton, who is the commando. Um, his first skill, which you will unlock at level 5, is his saber turret. Uh, it deploys a saber turret that automatically fires at enemies when you are near the saber turret. Reclaim it and refund it uh, for some of your cooldown. Uh, so the cooldown is 42 seconds, which is fairly substantial comparing to some of the other cooldowns of other characters in Borderlands. Um, so this is where you can start branching off into other skills. Uh, there are the three skills there. There's the gorilla, the gunpowder, and the survival. Those are the three... Uh, sections I guess you could choose the subsections and this one is the gorilla is kind of for your turret based but all of them use the turret in the final skill uh, but this one helps your turret all the way through um, the gunpowder is very much of a lone gunner kind of class you will need this if your turret is not you will not use it as much as I find that you don't if you're just starting these games uh, like Borderlands 2 uh, so I find the gunpowder is fairly good and the survival is very good because you will be almost like a heavy uh, you will have lots of health and lots of shield which will help you in battles no doubt so I'm gonna go through all the skills and then I'm gonna tell you which one I think is the best so for sentry increases number of shots your saber turret fires in each burst also increases your saber turret's duration. That is very helpful. I find that if I choose Axe in the Commando, I will definitely go for this skill first. Uh, for Ready, it increases your reload speed 8% per level. That is a lot if you want to stay in the battle while reloading guns. For Impact, it increases gun damage and melee damage. That is very good if you're a lone gunner. And it is unlocked early. Uh, as early as level 6, so you can use that right off the bat and really get your game going good. Uh, for ex for that skill, uh, it increases your weapon swap speed and aim speed, also your movement speed is increased while aiming. 14% uh, weapon swap speed, 14% aim speed, and 7% movement speed per level. Uh, that is very helpful due to the fact that there are so many sites in Borderlands 2 that allow you to see uh, almost everything that is going on in the fight so being able to move faster and still aim down the sights faster that is uh, very good especially for how easily you can unlock it uh, for healthy this is starting to get into the survival classes uh, so this is where you start increasing your health and shield so this increases your maximum health by six percent a level that's thirty percent at level five that will be very very useful uh, especially in later levels when you get lots of health, increasing it by 30% will help you no doubt. Uh, for preparation, increases your shield capacity also. Uh, when your shield is full, you regenerate health. Uh, so increases your shield capacity by 3% each level, and you regenerate 0.4% of your health per second when your shields are full, which is, I find that is very useful because your, your health regenerates very slowly, and at this skill level 5 that will help you uh, a lot believe me it'll help you a lot if you have not played Borderlands 1 you notice that health is a big problem but shields are often not uh, for the tier 2 skills uh, for your laser sight increases the accuracy of your saber turret 10% per level uh, I'm not sure how accurate the turret in Borderlands 2 is compared to Borderlands 1 because Borderlands 1 is, 1 is very accurate uh, but judging by this this will be a very useful skill for your turret um, for Rilling, improves your shield recharge rate and shield recharge delay. Uh, this is going to be very useful if you want to stay in the battle uh, while everything's going on, especially if you're doing co-op and you make sure you want to get that extra XP for killing enemies, uh, while you're, so your shield will keep recharging. Uh, that's very, very useful. Uh, for Overload, increases the magazine size with assault rifles 10% per level. Wow, and I mean wow. That is going to be very, very useful. Um, Metal Storm. It's a kill skill, which typically I'm not a fan of, 
especially if you're fighting bosses where not many other enemies are coming with you, it's not as useful as some of the other trades. Uh, but killing an enemy dramatically increases your fire rate and reduces recoil for a short period of time. So reduces recoil by 15% and you get a 12% fire rate increase. Uh, that is fairly good compared to some of the other kill skills, but I'm still not too much of a fan of it. Uh, last ditch effort increases your gun damage and movement speed while in fight of your life. Uh, notice how it says movement speed as in, in Borderlands 1, while you're in fight of your life, you could not move. You were in one spot. And often if enemies ran away from you after that, you lost lots of money and it was sometimes it just didn't help at all. Uh, so, But this will definitely increase the chance of you getting back up with that damage and movement speed. Uh, for pressure, improves your reload speed and shield recharge delay based on how much health you have. The lower your health, the higher the bonuses. Uh, that's fairly good, but I have to admit you have to really think about if you want this based on some of the other skills that there are. Okay, let's start getting into these tier 3. Onslaught, it's another kill skill. Again, like I said I'm not too much of a fan of it. Uh, but killing an enemy increases your gun damage and movement speed for a short period of time. Uh, that's fairly useful actually. Uh, in Borderlands 1, some of the kill skills were not as useful, but it seems that they are definitely uh, better in Borderlands 2 and more balanced. Uh, for Scorched Earth, adds multiple rocket pods to your saber turret. 22 rockets per volley. That is amazing. Uh, notice that any of the middle skills in the tier 3, you can only put one skill into. But that is still 22 rockets per volley. That is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, for Able, damaging an enemy causes you to regenerate health for a few seconds. This effort does not stack multiple times. As in, if you shoot an enemy, you re will regenerate health, but you will not regenerate health if you shoot an enemy multiple times. You have to wait for this 3 second delay uh, every time you shoot an enemy, and you get 0.4% of your maximum health per second. That's fairly useful actually, especially if you're facing e easy enemies who got a lucky shot and you want to regenerate your health quickly. Uh, that'll be very useful. Uh, for steady, reduces recoil with all weapons uh, types and increases grenade damage and rocket launcher damage. Uh, if you're a fan of explosives, as in grenades and rocket launchers, uh, who wouldn't enjoy this, right? This is just a generally good skill to have. Uh, for the longbow turret, your saber turret can be deployed using a longbow technology, allowing you to deploy it much further away, also increases the health of your saber turret. This skill is, it's unorthodox how good this skill is, especially the turret health, which is increased by 110%, and your deploy range, which is increased by 10,000%. So basically you can throw it as far as you want. So all you have to do is throw it right into the middle of battle, and then as you're running there, your turret will take out some of the easier enemies, so you can focus on taking out the harder ones with the turret. Uh, for Battlefront, uh, while your saber turret is deployed, you can deal increased damage. Uh, this is actually very, very helpful. I find that if I use the gunpowder skill tree, I will definitely use this skill. It's going to be very, very helpful. Uh, for this skill, it reduces the duration of status effects on you, uh, as example, burned, corroded, electrocuted, and slagged, also increases your maximum health. Uh, it's, it's a fairly good skill, especially because some of the bosses often have these special weapons which are burned, corroded, electrocuted, and so on. Uh, but the only problem is the maximum health only increases by 1% per level, uh, but the status effect durations uh, lose 8% per level. So it's useful if you know what you're getting into, but I would not suggest this skill. Uh, for this skill, uh, your saber turret projects a protective shield. Uh, the shield attempts to block enemy ranged attacks, but lets friendly ranged attack to pass through it. Uh, enemy movements and melee attacks are not affected. Uh, so your turret will get a shield, and this is going to be very helpful if you're playing as a team. So I would highly recommend this if you're doing it in split screen or co-op. Uh, for quick charge, uh, it's another kill skill. Again, I'm not too much of a fan, but I might start using these seeing how good they are. Uh, killing an enemy causes your shields to quickly regenerate for a short time. It's okay. Again, it's debatable whether you like these skills or not. Uh, personally, this skill I would not go for because 
one percent of your shields per second uh you'll do that over time with better shields anyway so i was, would not suggest this skill uh, and now we're getting into the tier four and this is when you really start to specialize in this skill uh, for grenader increases the maximum number of grenades you can carry one per level uh, so if you have one as a base and you get this five you'll have six grenades which is fairly useful again if there if you can buy grenade upgrades for the number of grenades you can carry just like you can in borderlands 2 you will be able to carry lots and lots of grenades and that's very very helpful especially due to the number of grenades that have been added in borderlands 2. Uh, duty calls increases the damage and fire rate of non-elemental guns this is fairly useful for the commando because he does not specialize in elemental guns anyways so i would suggest this skill because five percent damage and three percent fire rate can definitely add up uh, for do or die allows you to throw grenades while in fight for your life also increases your uh, grenade damage and rocket launcher damage that's going to be very useful very very useful G throwing grenades while you're in fight of your life that is going to be definitely a game changer especially in single player uh, if you're fighting a, an enemy that has far range and you're in close range this is this is the way to do it you can just throw a grenade and get a kill instantly no problem uh, for resourceful, increases your cooldown uh, rate on your saber turret action skill. 5% per level. That is a 25% difference over time. And that's a fair amount. Uh, so 25 minus 42. I don't want to do the math right now anyway. So uh, you can figure that out. But that is a fairly substantial amount. And for maglock, which is the last tier 4 skill there is. Uh, your saber turret can be deployed on walls and ceilings, so it's a hundred percent more sticky. This, this is a definitely going to be helpful. Uh, if you're in a spot, I noticed in Borderlands One, if you threw your turret, sometimes it would glitch out on the floor and be placed under the floor, and it could not attack. But for this, you'll be able to place it on the roof, on the walls, no problem. This is going to be definitely a great skill, especially if you're being a survivalist.